Hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel and welcome to this very interesting video today. In recent time I received several email people asking me about the actual situation of short circuit currents in electrical power systems. And some of those emails also ask me about the use of a reactor, inductive reactors, in order to limit the short circuit currents. Well, in this video, this is uh, the first video of a series of video where I will be talking about current limiting reactors. I mean, inductive reactors used to reduce the short circuit current. But before we start, I would like to say that this document and this video is using several reference with uh, very important documents, but also I am presenting some of my opinions and I would like to take responsibility for all the opinions and all the ideas that I am presenting here. As usual, I again, I invite you to join to the research gate that is an academic social media a repository that you can find many of our presentations, papers, research projects, and so on. Also, I highly suggest that you visit, uh, you visit our GitHub repository that you can find some of the practical examples that we are dealing. And if you are watching this video, it's because you are in the in the YouTube channel. And I highly suggest if you if you like our videos, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment, leave a like, and so on. Finally, if you want to be update about what is happening, what what is happening around the world in terms of research and development. I highly suggest that you follow my social media on Twitter and LinkedIn. And finally, and most recently, I have included here my email because many people contact me and ask me about an email that they can send some questions, okay? Well, let's come back to the problem. We want to limit the short circuit currents in electrical power systems. And before I start, I would like to show you some numbers, some indicators that you realize the current situation in many power systems around the world. And the current situation in many countries around the world is by increasing the installed generation capacity using traditional synchronous generators, the short circuit capacity is increasing and the best way that i can show you this is using my favorite software for power system analysis the xilin power factory let's go to the software and let's use a very basic test system to show you some of the most important features related with increasing the total generation cap installed capacity well, right now we are here in the excellent power factory. As you can see, we have a very simple power system. There are three synchronous generators connected using a zero impedance or directly connected to the bus bar number one. Bus bar number one can be the main, the main bus bar in this power plant station. We have three synchronous generator, classical synchronous generator, G1, G2, and G3. All of these generator, each one of them has a capacity 1515 MBA, and all of them are working at 13 KB. Before we start the motivation simulation, let's do the following. Let's run a classical AC load flow. As you can see over here, the generator one is the only one connected to the bus bar number one. Because you can see generator two and three, the circuit breakers are open. And in this case, the generator is working on unload condition. 
I mean, there is no load connected to this generator, and you can see that because the current is zero. But also, the generator is working at nominal, a nominal or rate of voltage, because as you can see over there, the boost bar is working at one per uh, one point zero per unit or thirty three zero kV. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is the effect of increasing the install capacity in this bus bar number one, and you will see how the short circuit levels increase. Let me start by running the short circuit. In this case, we are running the short circuit using the method that is called the complete method. In this case, we are calculating the single phase neutral to ground single phase short circuit and there is not impedance. If we calculate, if we calculate the short circuit, as you can see here, the short circuit current when we are using a single, a single generator connected to the bus bar, in this case G1, we have a short circuit that is around 1.87 kiloamps. But imagine now that we put on service the generator number two, and let me repeat the short circuit calculation, the same short circuit at the same place. And now you can see that when we use, when we use the short circuit, when we calculate the short circuit using the generator one plus generator two, now the short circuit is around 3.99 kilo amps. And finally, to conclude this motivation example, let me switch on the generator number three. And right now I will rerun the short circuit because I want to know what will be, sorry, the single phase, yes, the single line to ground short circuit. And now when you have the three generators connected, when you have the three generators connected to the bus bar, G1, G2, plus G3, now the short circuit level is 7.75 kiloamps. I believe everyone here can see that when we install the capacity, when we increase the capacity, here it was 15 MBA, here was 30 MBA, and here was 45 MBA. When we have the three generators working together, connected together to the bus bar number one, the short circuit levels increase. And the reason is very simple. Those generators, they are connected in parallel in bus bar number one, and of course, the total equivalent impedance when you have three generators is reduced. So for the same voltage level, the short circuit levels increase. Now, this is a situation that is happening in many, many countries. When you increase the short, uh, when you increase the installed capacity, generation capacity, of course, you are increasing the short circuit levels, but this is only if you are using synchronous machine. Because if you are using power converters, the history is very, very different. Because you must remember that the short, the short circuit capacity of power converters are very, very limited, okay? But yes, with this example, what I want to show you and what I show it to all of you is that increasing the number of generators in this bus bar, we are increasing the short circuit levels at the bus bar number one. But now the question is, what is why is it extremely important that we can control the short circuit levels? Well, we want to control the short circuit levels because, because, the circuit breakers, they have a capacity to break the short circuit faults. And if the short circuit fault current is above the limit of that circuit breaker, in those cases, we are exposing 
the the equipments and the people around that circuit breaker to a very dangerous situation because during a full condition that circuit breaker will not be able to interrupt the short circuit and the energy dissipated in the process of trying to interrupt that short circuit current can create a very dangerous situation involving for instance the explosion of that circuit breaker. Well, I hope that this motivation example allow you to understand two important things. In some power systems that we are increasing the capacity to install in more synchronous generators, we have the possibility that the short circuit levels are above the limits of the interrupting capacity of the circuit breaker. And we need to do something. And now the question is, how do we limit the short circuit currents? Well, if we are in transmission systems where the reactance is typically larger than the resistance, well, we can say, we can say that the short circuit current is a function of the voltage and the total equivalent reactance. If that is the case, well, we have two possible ways to limit the short circuit currents. It's clear that we can use the voltage. We can increase the voltage because if we increase the voltage, in theory, we are reducing the short circuit fall current. But to be honest, that is not a realistic option. I mean, if you are in a planning stage, if you are planning to create a new generation power plan and so on, probably that could be an option. But if we are working in a power plan, genera generation power plan that is already installed and working, and what we want to do is install a new generator, well, it's very, very unrealistic that we try to increase the voltage level. For that reason, the second, the second solution that is increasing the inductive reactance that is seen by the full location is a more realistic option. For that reason, inductive reactors, they can be used and it has been used for many decades as a mechanism to reduce the short circuit currents. And here, what I want to tell you is, yes, we can limit the current using a reactor. If you can see over here, one of the possible options of limiting the short circuit currents is by installing those inductive reactors in a very specific place. And of course, with a very specific design. Those inductors, we try to have linear inductive reactants in order that the total apparent equivalent impedance between the generation and the fault points will be increased arithmetically. Let me, let me explain this with a very short example, okay? I will use a very simple example. Imagine that we have a system and this system is a single synchronous generator directly connected to the bus bar. And now let's imagine that we have a three-phase short circuit like the short circuit happening here at the point F. Well, we have on the left-hand side the single line diagram and on the right-hand side we have the impedance diagram. And it's very simple for all people to see that the short, the subtraction short circuit current here in this situation B will be the internal voltage of the synchronous machine divided by the subtraction reactance. And by the way, that value is very, very low, so the magnitude of that short circuit current, three-phase short circuit current, will be several times the load current. But now, let's 
think about including a serious reactor. In this case, is an inductive reactor that is connected between the generator and the faulted bus bar. Now, we can move from the single line diagram to the impedance diagram, and you can see over here that inserting this series reactor, what is doing is basically in increasing, arithmetically increasing, the denominator of the subtraction short circuit current. But now, this denominator, this denominator in this equation will be larger than this one. And the consequence is very simple. The consequence is that the short circuit current, the original, at this one, at this situation B, will be larger than the situation A. So we can see that without serious reactor, we have short circuit currents that they are at least larger than when we don't have the um, when we have the series reactor okay what i telling you is that when we include this series reactor the short circuit current will be smaller compared to the original case well this is the first video of a series of video where I will be talking about current limiting using the reactor. Of course, this example that I introduced over here, they are extremely basic because depending of the type of fault, depending of the location of that uh, inductive reactors, of course, the design and the performance of the system will change. Something that you must understand is that by adding these reactors, limiting reactors, we are modifying the performance of the system, and it's not only during the fault condition, it's also during the normal operation of the system. In that sense, the next videos, I will be discussing the possibility of installing those current limiting reactors in different places, and of course, showing you advantages and disadvantages. And we will use some numerical examples and simulations to show you more details. Well, this is the very end of this video. We are working with current limiting reactors, and I highly invite you to follow this series of video where we will be discussing, discussing the advantages and disadvantages. But also, in the last section of these videos, I will show you the use of current limiters, the most recent advances of limiting the short circuit current using a different element to a classical reactor. Well, this is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at the next video. And I must say bye now. Bye.